Hello everyone, welcome to Scardia.com. This is Dr. Sana Khan with the General Surgery course. Today we'll be starting uh, discussing about the splenic pathologies and different conditions which are related to the spleen, the infectious conditions, and the autoimmune processes which are actually affecting the spleen. But in today's topic, uh, we will be talking about the splenic infarction and aneurysms. So just uh, have a look at the outline of today's lecture. We'll be talking a little bit about the anatomy because spleen occupies an important quadrant in the abdomen, which is the left hypochondrium. So the right hypochondrium is occupied by the liver and the left hypochondrium is occupied by the spleen. So any condition which is related, either the trauma or injury or uh, a patient is complaining you about the uh, left hypochondrial pain, then you will be uh, thinking some pathology which is related to the spleen. In today's lecture, we'll be talking about the anatomy, the surface anatomy, the extent of the spleen, how you're going to palpate it, and important blood supply the splenic artery and its relationship to the pancreas. Uh, we'll be talking in detail about the physiology, the the proper capsulated spleen, the sinusoid, the trabeculate, the pulp, and the splenic hilum. And uh, in splenomegaly, uh, what important structure of the spleen can be palpated by your finger. Then we'll be talking about the different um, investigations which are usually going to help you investigate a case uh, of spinomegaly like myeloproliferative disorders and other hemolytic anemias and also uh, the important investigation, especially the radiological investigation. What is the significance of ultrasound? What information you are uh, going to get by the ultrasound? And what is the significance of the computed tomography, especially when you're suspecting the splenic artery aneurysms and you're suspecting the infarction? What important information can be given to you by computed tomography. Then we'll be talking about the role of the magnetic resonance imaging because we know that MRI is more sensitive to the soft tissue. So in case of the aneurysms and in case of the uh, splenic lesions, how MRI is going to help you in the diagnosis. Then we'll be talking about the role of the radioisotope scanning, which radioisotope is used in case of the radiological imaging for spleen, and especially uh, how radioisotope scanning is going to help you uh, differentiate if the hemolysis is because of the spleen or the RBC destruction is taking place somewhere else. Then we'll be talking a little bit about the congenital anomalies of the spleen, hematoma, splenic space, and uh, splenic calculi or uh, splenic ally we'll be talking in detail. Our main fo focus uh, um, today is about uh, the aneurysm. We'll be talking about the causes behind the development of the aneurysm. We'll be talking about the clinical presentation and which investigations are going to help you in the diagnosis. Then we'll be talking about the treatment options available uh, like splenectomy, the splenic artery embolization, and laparoscopy. And we'll be talking uh, about the scenarios in which you will do the splenectomy, but in other scenarios, you would be doing embolization. We'll be talking about the splenic infarction, the causes, the clinical features, and how you are going to make a diagnosis, what important investigations are going to help you. Then we'll be talking about the treatment, a single most specific thing is splenectomy. So we'll be talking about that in detail. Then we'll be talking about the splenic rupture, the traumatic splenic rupture, or again, short injury or the penetrating injury and we'll be talking about the a spleen rupture owing to the um, you know infections, especially the term called is malarial spinal rupture. We'll be talking about that in uh, detail in our lecture. So we have got other uh, lectures on our site, which is Scadia.com. You can go there, get access, and enjoy our lectures. For the detailed lecture, keep watching Scadia.com with Dr. Sana Khan.